Okay, guys, hi. I'm Abby. If you're here, you know that probably. I get a lot of pronoun showdown and 54 things legally blonde questions. So whenever I answer them on Instagram, it's always like kind of these like half-assed typed out answers. So I wanted to answer them all for you. Not live. It's not live. Um, like in person ish. So we're doing that today. I have all these questions saved and ready to go in screenshots. We're all set. Um, yeah, I'm going to answer them for you. And then we have a little surprise at the end of the video that um, I'm going to tell you about that Kim and I have been scheming. Also, if we decide we like doing videos together, like if I'm filming them and you guys are watching them, you're like, yeah, like you can keep doing that. Or you guys might be like, don't just like don't do it ever again. Either is totally fine. However, if we do continue doing videos together, I'm not going to be doing them here. I'm not going to be doing them on my Mac where I've opened Photo Booth for the first time ever to record this video because I didn't know how else to do it. This isn't even my home. So the background will be different. My computer will not, not be balanced on a revolve box and a buying guide to imported wines book. I feel like I'm in a museum. It's gorgeous. It's just like not my house. So don't get used to this. <laughs> Bear with me. Question number one. What's the casting process like for your concerts? Um, so we usually figure out, Kim and I will go through and we'll pick songs we want in the show and then we think like who would be best for this. And um, that's kind of how it's gone for the most part. Occasionally there will be a situation where we're like so-and-so's in town so we want to use them and then we find a song for that person. But for the most part, we have the song first and then we do the casting second. Usually it's also a friend, but sometimes it will be someone like we don't know and then we'll just like blind DM or email or whatever to try to get that person if we really want them. How did this idea come up? It's so unique and fun. So Kim, my co-producer, and another performer were going to do a concert that kind of explored gender bent songs so not miscast but what happens when it's actually like a different gender singing the song and I was producing it and um that kind of fell through so then it kind of turned into this idea which actually fun fact that concert when Kim was telling me that that's what they were doing I was like wait so that's like interesting because then like dead girl walking if it's a guy singing it, it gets very inappropriate very quickly, which is funny because now we finally actually have done that song in pronoun and it like almost took a year, but um, it's just funny how things start and then eventually end up happening. Is it hard to make enough with the costs and the amount of performers for the shows? Yes. Concerts don't make a ton of money for the performers and the producers like almost no money um, is definitely not like the thing to do if you're looking to make an extra buck because that's, sorry, I'm like gonna hit this computer. Um, yeah, you don't really make much. You're paying for a photographer and a videographer and a music director and sometimes a band and it's just, yeah, it's not, um, it's not great financially. Let's see what's next. Can we get another location hint? Sure. Um, Ben called me out and said that my clue that like I visited the city to see a friend in a show, he was like, Abby, that's a horrible clue. You've done that with like every city, which the more I thought about it, I was like, oh my God, that's true. Like I've, I've done a lot of traveling to see friends in shows. Um, what's a better clue? I was seeing a blonde friend in a show and it was not San Diego. The location is not San Diego. Where are we going? Where will they be? P.S. I love you and you inspire me so much heart. Thank you, Alpha Forever. It's a great name. Um, I just kind of answered that. So we can't officially tell you yet, but that is a clue for our next location. What's your favorite duo to have sung a pronoun song together? A duo. Uh, the Derek and Antonio for good I think was really cute. I also love the Adam and Leela for good. Um, I'm probably missing a duo that's going to make me sad. I'm going to be mad about it. I'm going to be mad about it. How do you get to be in a pronoun showdown? Um, we don't really have like a an audition situation. It's just kind of the people we know. Um, 
maybe that'll change. If he didn't believe in me is my favorite pronoun creation, who came up with that one? Thanks. Um, I have a I have a weird relationship with the last five years, and that I'm not gonna get into, but that was when I was really excited about. I think that was me. I'll feel really bad if it was Kim. But I, I'm pretty sure that one was me, I think. I should check, but I'm pretty sure. Um, oh, we're on the next page. Will the next pronoun show down include non-Broadway songs? Probably. Actually, yeah, probably. There's been one song we've wanted since the very first show. Um, this gal has not been in New York and she's finally here, so I wonder if it'll work out timing-wise with the show she's in on Broadway. But that's not a Broadway song, so yeah, we like those. I think Broadway is just more fun. It's just what I listen to most. I'm pretty sure it's what Kim listens to most, so it's what ends up happening. But um, yeah, who knows? Would you like to tour? Much love from Arizona. Pink sparkle heart. Hey, Arizona. I love Arizona. Uh, yeah, we would. Um, I know I get a lot of comments about it. I'm sure Kim does too of people that are like, I wish I could see pronoun and like bring it here, bring it there. Um, same with Legally Blonde. But that is something we've been talking about for a while. Um, we've talked to people in a couple different cities and that is something that is probably happening. We will be announcing a tour city probably this week. Maybe, 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 I don't know. Probably, probably. I would also love to go to Arizona. I saw um, a show at ASU Gamage about a year ago, maybe two-ish years ago. Um, my brother goes to school there. I love Arizona. I would love to bring Pronoun Showdown there. Do you have a favorite Pronoun Showdown that you've put on? You know, once they're up on YouTube, I have to be honest, I don't think about them as like a full show anymore. I like, the performances are separate to me. So I think I'd have to say the April show, which was our best of, just because it's like the videos that made me excited and I know like made like the fans excited. Well, actually all of them make me excited. Um, but it was just kind of like a big celebration of like a bunch of different ones that we loved throughout the year. So I think that one, because before that I can't, I can't really separate. Like I could only tell you if something was in a show, if it's like the color the person's wearing was like the color theme of that show. If you gave me like a list of every single performance we've ever had, I don't think I would get like five in the right show. Actually, I guess mathematically I would have had to, but like, yeah, I can't, I can't place it once it's over. It's just, if it's on YouTube, it's in its like own little world. Um, pronoun showed on Cleveland. Sure. There was like a whole season on Broadway where every single show almost had a like a Cleveland reference, like Bandstand and Groundhog Day and... others. Anastasia! Like, sorry. There were like a lot of Cleveland references on Broadway. And I was like, Cleveland is like it right now. So yeah, I would love to go to Cleveland. I'm sure Kim would too, so maybe we'll make that happen. Would you ever take submissions, auditions, suggestions for PS? Um, yeah, I mean, we have so many songs that we haven't even been able to use yet. So it's not so much that like, well, I'm sure there's ones we haven't thought of, but there's not so many that like, when we do repeats, it's not necessarily because we're running out. We just repeat it for one reason or another. Um, always open to ideas, totally. Submissions and stuff, sure. But again, like, we just kind of use our friends, you know? Are you going to be reaching out for help again? Probably. We have four really, really awesome girls that helped with the last show, and I believe we'll be helping with the next show. So as of now, we definitely don't need any more help, but who knows? They might get bored of us. We might need new people. That could happen. Thanks for asking. What does the future pronoun showdown look to you like long term? Um, I don't want to speak for Kim here, but I know for me, I would like to continue doing them every once in a while. I would like to bring them to other cities so that more people can see them live because it makes me really happy that even though like everything's up on YouTube, you guys still want more and you still want more of the experience. So I would like to bring them to more cities. Um, I think, I think the show works well that way. I don't think like, you know, I don't like my friend asked yesterday, she was like, is this like something you want to do like a Netflix special of one day? And like, 
I don't think so. I like what it is. I like that it's small and intimate, and I do hope it stays that way. Please buy tickets, but I hope it stays like this small, fun little thing we get to do. Um, what did producing Pronoun Showdown teach you that you weren't expecting to learn? Oh, okay. Um, I can't even say like that it's not going to be easy because I figured, I think what surprised me was there was like a day, there was a really tough pronoun for me and I didn't, I didn't feel like I was being taken, well, I did feel like a little bit taken advantage of in some situations. I felt like some people weren't like fully listening to me and it's hard because when you're people's friend and also like the producer of the show, you have like two very distinctive jobs and one is like being the friend and one is like getting the show to what you need the show to be and I was kind of struggling and the morning of this show, um, Laura Osnes, who has been like, like lover protector of me for years, Marco polled me. She was like on vacation. She was like, "Yay, pronoun day!" And I like responded, and I was, I was like, "Laura, I don't know what to do." And she was like, "Yeah." She's like, "There comes the time you have to be the boss." And I was like, "Okay, you kind of have to step into a role sooner than you thought you would." You know, I'm not like producing a Broadway musical here. I'm co-producing a concert with like a few people, you know, so it was interesting to get to a point that I was like, oh, I got like, I have to be the boss here. So that was probably like the number one thing I learned. And I'm glad that that was before 54 Sings Legally Blonde, because that was a big job. And thank God I had Matt for that. How did you begin the process of creating Pronoun Showdown? I touched on this a little bit. Once Kim and I realized we didn't need to do the show with the other performer, um, because things for him got crazy, we were like, let's, we can like do Pronoun like on our own also pronoun showdown was a very temporary title that i guess is no longer temporary i like shot a few texts off like on the couch like that night as we were thinking about it and everyone was like it, yeah of course i'll do it so that's kind of how it like actually started uh will bruiser get to sing a solo for those of you that don't know my dog jean valjean played bruiser at 54 sings legally blonde and he was phenomenal Maybe he'll get a solo in the next one. We'll talk to like Larry O'Keefe and be like, would you write something? Maybe. Why didn't Alex Newell perform in 54 Sings Legally Blonde at least the 7 p.m. show? Okay, I'm so excited I got this question because this is something I've seen a lot of people talk about and I want to clear it up once and for all. Alex booked a very fancy pilot in Vancouver like right before. As soon as there was any, like, maybe possibility of missing this concert, Alex was on top of it. Let Matt and I know that, like, this could be happening. Did everything possible to try to be there for the concerts. Like, truly, there are so many situations where people, I think, don't tell the whole story because they don't want to, like, call anyone out. And this is, like, so not what that is. Alex did everything possible to be there for the show when we knew that that was impossible. Um, we had, we were so lucky to have Haven Burden come in, but like really, truly Alex, like we love, we love, we love, we love, we love, we love Haven for coming to fill in. This was just like one of those really crazy scheduling things, but Alex's pilot also got picked up. So like snaps for Alex and like totally worth missing the concert. <laughs> Please bring pronoun and legally bond to Houston. I love that. I love Houston. That would be really fun. That would be really, really, really fun. Steph Styles has to be there. Yes. Yes. Also that. Is there anyone you really wanted at the concert but timing kept you from booking them? Yes. So many times. So many times. If you guys look through the old announcements, you'd be like, wait, a lot of these people didn't end up. Like, things happen. This is like a very spontaneous business. So... Yeah, I mean, we've had people be like, I booked a TV show, I'm flying out. And we're like, go, like, we'll miss you, but like, not that much, because like, you booked, so like, do your thing. Things happen all the time. There are people that, it's been an ongoing conversation, we're just kind of like, you know what, you have your song, we've rehearsed it. If you make it to any of the future pronouns, great, come sing. A lot of them. What is your favorite funniest pronoun song, why? Oh, okay. I love the Taylor Swift ex-boyfriend medley. We waited on that one for a really long time. I'm a big T-Swift fan. Kim is not. I was very passionate about it. She was very willing. Like, each concert she was like, 
do you want to do it now? I'm like, no, we need the right group. We need the right time. We need the right songs. Like, I was, like, very much, like, we're not rushing it. But she knew I wanted it. So each show she'd be like, do you, do you want to do Taylor Swift? I'd be like, not yet, not yet, not yet. And then when we finally did it, I thought it was just, like, the perfect trio. And I love that so, so much. That makes me laugh a lot. That one I love. Is there, like, a solo funniest one I love the most? I love all of them so much. Do you have tips for someone who wants to start producing concerts, especially 54 Below? Just ask. Just get an idea. Email 54. Start reaching out to performers. I don't want to say it's, like, not that hard because, like, the work after is hard. But, like, securing a show isn't isn't hard. Like, literally anyone can do it. And, like, you should because it's super fun and super rewarding. Just be prepared to, like, put in the work. And, yeah, it's it's a lot, but it's so worth it. Uh, how do you choose which song goes to which performer? Do they get a say? We've probably had like two or three times in the year of people being like, hey, I would really like to sing this song. And we're like, oh, okay. And we like look at it and we talk to them about it. But for the most part, we reach out to someone and we're like, hey, what do you think this song? I think you'd kill it. And like a lot of it, I know like my friends dream roles and I know like the roles I want my friends to play and they know I want them to play it. So a lot of times it's like, Finally, like, like obviously, Dan DeLuca. Everyone knows I want him to play Emmett Forrest. He did Emmett Forrest in 54 Sings Like Luke Bond. So, like, him singing so much better, that was like a, we have an Emmett moment. You know, so, I don't know. It kind of depends, but usually they don't have a say. <laughs> usually they trust, which is very nice. <laughs> Do you have any fears or hesitations before you did your first print on showdown? Yes, we were on the cancellation block. Like, we were potentially not even going to be able to do our show because we weren't selling tickets. So, yes, I was super nervous. We ended up, like, overselling that first show. And so, like, I was fine. But, no, I was so nervous. And I felt bad because I was, like, asking my friends to do this for me. And the idea of, like, these people coming up and getting on stage and like no one's in the audience was so embarrassing. Like that idea was so embarrassing to me. So yeah, I was very nervous. We weren't going to sell tickets. So like seriously, I, and I know I say this on Instagram and stuff, but like, thank you guys so much for like being supportive and buying tickets and coming to these things and coming with like gifts and cards is like so beyond anything I could have ever dreamt of. Just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because like, and I know everyone says it, but, like we literally wouldn't be able to get to do this stuff if, if it wasn't for you guys. So like, like, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That means a lot. And yeah, so now I'm not really nervous about shows because like I know you guys have my back, which is really nice. And I know Kim and I are very comforted by that. So thank you. Uh, and oh my God, 54 Singly Glee Blonde. You guys sold that so fast. So thank you so much. Um, why aren't all the print on videos on YouTube? Um, it's a bunch of different reasons. Usually it's because the performer is sick. So it's been a few times now that someone's like come and been like, listen, I wasn't going to cancel on you, but like, I am so sick. I don't even know if I'm going to be in my show this, like all of this week, like I'm feeling terrible. So like, I'm probably not going to want this video on YouTube, but like I'm here to perform and like, we're so grateful and they always sound amazing. Um, but yeah, it's like, it's on YouTube. It's forever. So like, if you don't want it up, we're like totally like no worries whatsoever. And then like once in a while, it'll be like just something like, the song didn't exactly go how we wanted, sound-wise or whatever, and we just choose not to put it up. So, yeah, know that if it can be up, it will be. What has been your favorite pronoun showdown arrangement yet? The Burn Trio. I'm obsessed with it. I'm, like, literally obsessed with it. Kim and I went through those lyrics, like, a thousand times, dividing, like, exactly who was going to say exactly what word and, like, that has to be Angelica. Like, that's so important that it's Angelica. But Eliza has to come in at the end because she agrees with her. Like, it was the most. And it's like, I'm obsessed with that one. How far in advance do things get planned? Oh, so sometimes it's a couple weeks. Sometimes it's not enough weeks. Sometimes it's like a year. The Burn Trio, actually, we planned, like, as we planned the first burn. Kim was talking about doing a trio of Drive a Person Crazy. We were talking about burn right before that and I was like, oh my god, that's so funny. Like when you said the trio, I was thinking burn and now that I'm saying it out loud, that actually feels like something that maybe needs to happen. So then we were like, okay, so we just have to do an Alexander burn. Then we, for our next show, like a few months later, 
could do an Angelica burn and then we could bring them with Eliza with the original. So like that one was like just months of being like, when can we do the burn trio? <laughs> I asked where I am. Favorite Pernod Showdown performance. I keep talking about the burn trio, which I love, but I also like, there's so many I love. I really love um, Breathe, Antonio's Breathe. That one took so long to get in the show. We had like two people announced that both got sick and they both like sounded amazing in rehearsals and I was so excited for that one. And then we lost them like right before and then like Antonio, like finally like seeing him do it on stage and like I love him and I love the song and I like, I just, I love that one so much, so much, so much, so much. So yeah, that's one of my favorites also. Also, Laura Osnes, If He Didn't Believe in Me. Oh, I love that one. How do you come up with the concept of Pronounce Showdown? We talked about that. Did you, do you decide the Pronounce Showdown songs before or after finalizing a cast? Before. Will you do another 54 Sings Legally Blonde? I would love to. I would love to, I would love to, I would love to. I should probably actually text Matt right now and be like, can we do another one, please? Um, first person ever signed on to doing a pronoun showdown. Should we call Kim? Hello? 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 That's not Kim. This isn't Kim. <laughs> Hi. Thanks. A good time. I am. Love ya. Hello. Hi. We're just on break. Wait, I'm doing this pronoun video right now and I have no idea what the answer is to one of the questions. Okay. Who was the first person that ever agreed to it? Hmm. Like, when we were sitting on that couch, who right. would I have it texted and would have been like, hey, would you do this? Was it? That's my guess. Okay. I'm going to go with a, it. He's just like the sweetest. I <laughs> know. But I think he's also someone we would have texted in the middle of the night. Yeah, I've been right like just checking. To text a lot of other people until like daylight hours. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay, I'm going with it. Okay, great. I'll call you if I have any more questions. Dreams. Thank you, thank you. Perfect, bye. Bye. Kim thinks it's Josh Burridge, which sounds right. It's either Josh or Catherine and Nathan. We sent out, like, a few texts and then, like, got answers back. And those three, I feel like, are, like, the ones that I would have texted that would have, like, gotten back right away and been like, yes. So it's probably them. I always love your outfits and get so excited to see what you wear. Which was your favorite? That's so nice. Um... My favorite, I think, was the blue show. My least favorite outfit was the pink show. It's not weird. I like just did not feel cute. I was like sick the day before. My whole face like felt chapped. I just did not feel cute. Um, blue show. I was tan. I liked my dress. I liked the color. I liked my hair and makeup. Funny enough, that's the show I hated most just because, like, I was personally miserable that day. I was just, like, going through some stuff. The day wasn't great, but my outfit was. Which print on show was your favorite and least favorite? Oh, so I just kind of said my least favorite was definitely the blue show. It was, like, the best people and, like, really amazing performances. But, yeah, not my best day personally, so not my favorite show. My favorite show was probably, probably April. It was like one that like it worked out that like a lot of my favorite people were in it and it was like rainbow, which is always fun. Um, or I guess like the actual pink show I liked. I didn't feel cute at all, but I like I liked the show a lot, I think. Yeah, yeah, I did. Because I remember we saved a lot for pink, which makes me feel like December like didn't do. Oh, I liked my outfit in December too. I didn't love my hair, but I liked my outfit. Which song was the most last minute? Uh, For Good with Derek and Antonio. That one, the night before the concert, I was with a bunch of friends, one of whom was Derek. Derek was coming to the concert the next day, but not singing. So I was like, at like 11 o'clock, I was like, do you want to sing tomorrow? And he was like, sure. So I text Kim, I was like, Derek's going to sing. Let's get him a song. So like the three of us are brainstorming. Everyone's like trying to help figure out his song and then at like 2 a.m. We're like, oh 
for good with Antonio would be really funny. And Derek's wife, Alicia, was like, you guys can't ask him to do that this last minute. And we were like, he's probably like the only one we could ask to do this this last minute. So I text Antonio at like 3 a.m. And I was like, hey, love you so much. You know how much I appreciate you, right? And he comes back and he's like, what do you want me to sing? And I was like, for good with Derek? And he was like, yeah, just tell me which part I am. I was like, that's a real friend. So they did that with like one rehearsal, AKA sound check. And it's like one of our best videos on YouTube. Is there any song performance you regret? No, there's two. Which PS song was the biggest risk for you? Oh, Left Behind. The very first show we had Left Behind from Spring Awakening and Danny Quadrino performed it beautifully. But we were so nervous because like teen suicide is like not something you want to get wrong, you know? So that one was made me nervous because I was like, I just don't want anyone like to feel overly uncomfortable or, you know, like touch on something that like is going to make people not enjoy. Um, so that one made me really nervous. And then it ended up going so well when Danny performed it that we actually did it again a month later with Joey Labraska. When Danny, I think Danny had must have just left for tour. So we were like, well, Joey could do it. Kim had met Joey at a concert, so we brought him in for that, and he did it beautifully. And then because people responded so well to those performances, we ended up like that kind of led the way to Requiem from Dear Evan Hansen with Antonio, which is like probably one of the most successful songs we have on YouTube. So um, it all worked out really well. It was definitely worth the risk, but it made me super nervous. What's the casting process like for your concerts? We kind of touched on this. When did, how did this idea come up? We did talk about that. Is it hard to make enough with, I'm repeating them. Oh, do we do all of them? Fierce. Okay. Fun little announcement for you. Hello. Hey, okay. What is the next city we're doing Pronoun Showdown in? New York City. What? We're coming back to New York City? Yes. When? Six months? On August, oh, no, on August 20th. At 9.30 p.m.? At 9.30 p.m. At Green Room 42? At Green Room 42, yes, this is all correct information. We're going to be back in New York City on Tuesday, August 20th at 9.30 p.m. at Green Room 42? I know, it's the most exciting thing ever. Are performers, like, epic or are they, like, unbelievably epic? Unbelievably epic times a million. <gasps> Are you guys hearing this? Oh my god. And should we maybe announce the other city we're going to be in like later this week, do you think? I think so. That's probably the best idea. <sighs> oh my god. It's a magical time for Pronoun Showdown. It sounds like it is. All right. Do you want to say goodbye to everyone? Bye, everyone. I'm so nervous. I'm forgetting something. I have this on the teal's gonna kill me.